It's uh, lovely to be here with your pastors and leaders and sharing fellowship with them and also to be with you as a fellowship. And uh, I'd like to welcome those that are watching this online or watching the stream. Um, you may not be with us here this morning, but we know that you are with us in spirit and we welcome you too in Jesus' name. Can you all say amen to that? Amen. amen. You know, there's some lovely words that we know very well in John 14. Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And they powerful words. It just seems to me that Jesus is wanting his disciples, his people, to live in the light of eternity. He just said, it's, it's about me going away and me coming back for you. And I think Jesus is saying, get your eyes off of things that are around and let's get our eyes fixed on the hope, the destiny, the promise, the blessing that God has for us. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. That is eternity. And I believe we are meant to live our lives every day in the light of eternity. My goodness, you look around at this world and there's so much stuff that gets you down. But when you look, lift your eyes up to heaven and you see what God has for us, we see those blessings that God, the joy, the greatness. Wow, hallelujah. You know, Jim Reeves sing that song, to me. If this world is... <laughs> you know it, don't you? This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up where? Somewhere beyond, beyond the blue. What a wonderful hope. And by word of encouragement to you today, let's live our lives in the light of eternity. Amen. I heard about this couple who passed away and they went to the pearly gates and Peter greeted them and welcomed them in and took them to this amazing mansion and it was, it was just a, an amazing mansion beside the still waters of a river running by there. It was absolutely fantastic. And afterwards, Peter said, there's a feast now, and Jesus is going to be there. And the, the best food you'd ever imagined in your life was there at this a fantastic feast. And afterwards, he took the couple out and showed them this amazing golf course. And Peter said, but how much, you, the couple said, how much does all this cost? And Peter said, it's free. It's free. You're in heaven. And the man turned to his wife and he said, you've been feeding me that health stuff all my life. I could have been here 10 years earlier if you'd have let me have the burgers. I tell you what a wonderful, what a wonderful hope we have. And my encouragement, let's lift our eyes to eternity. Let's live every day. Let's live every day in this troublesome world in the light of eternity. Hallelujah. The Bible says in his presence there is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures for amazing pleasures. I was talking to this guy and he was a kind of a nominal Christian. He was a lawyer. And he said, you know, going to heaven. I said, yeah. He said, there's no evil in heaven, is there? I said, no, I don't think so. There won't be any. He said, well, it's no good for me. He said, I'm a lawyer. There'll be no... To, to, to defend in heaven I won't have any work I said I think Jesus will fill you with plenty in his presence Amen, Amen. in his presence is the fullness of joy at his right hand there are pleasures lift up your eyes from what's around and let's live our lives in the light of eternity how can we do this because of I just want to reiterate this morning if you don't mind 
We do this because of the wonder of our salvation. Do you know the wonder of our salvation? That we are born again, that we belong to Jesus. We become so familiar with these things, but what a wonder, what a wonderful salvation that we have, that we're born again. You know, Revelation says, these are those that have come out of great tribulation and they have washed their robes and they have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And we're a people that are redeemed. We're washed in the blood of the Lamb. We belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glorious. Truth is, we live in a sinful world. And truth is, we're all sinners. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner. People out there are sinners. The difference is we're saved by grace. Yeah. They're not. Truth is we're all sinners. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life, but the wages of sin is death. There's a price to sin, you know. There's a price to sin. But we have washed our robes. We have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. You know, a guy came into my office one occasion and he'd just been in prison for 25 years for murder. And he showed me the transcript of his trial. He said, would you like to read it? And to be honest, I'm not sure I wanted to, but he wanted me to. So I read this transcript and in my head, while I'm reading this transcript of this murder trial, in my head I thought... I'm not like that. <laughs> I've never done anything like that. And it's almost as if at that moment the Holy Spirit said to me, yeah, but you're no angel, are you? <laughs> yeah. And I thought, do you know, I'm still a sinner. I'm still a sinner and you're a sinner. But the wonder of our salvation is we're washed in the blood of the precious Lamb of God. Oh, don't, don't you feel excited about that? Don't you feel thrilled about that? To belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. We've come to that place called the cross of Calvary. And we knelt there before the cross. And our Savior that hung there and died for us. He washed us and he cleansed us. And he purified. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. What a wonderful salvation we have. You know... Some of you might remember this, some of you, I don't know if anyone is, but when I was a kid, my mum sent me to piano lessons. And I can still see the name Pablo over this house, terraced house. And inside was a wizened lady with a bit of a hunchback, you know, and uh, she had a gas light, no electricity. And she had to pull a cord down for the gas and a taper to light the gas light, you know? And I'd sat there and teaching me to play. Do you know the first song she taught me to play? What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. From that day to this, I've never forgot those words. Can't play piano, <laughs> but I never forgot the words. Wonderful salvation. I say live in the light of eternity because we have such a wonderful salvation. Can I remind you, it's the only way. There is no other way. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father except through me. You know, I was watching a program and some scholars were talking about how kind of barbaric the sacrifices of the Old Testament were and the shedding of blood and, you know, of the violence and the cruelty of the cross and the shedding of the blood of Jesus and the crown of thorns and the nails. And they were saying, you know, we don't need that stuff. What we need is the teaching of Jesus. If we just follow the teaching of Jesus, we'll be fine. You know something? The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Hallelujah. And we have been to that place called Calvary. 
and we have found salvation. What a wonderful salvation we have. Our hope is in Jesus and in Jesus alone. If you are watching online, our hope is in Jesus. In Jesus alone. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. You know, I went to, I went to visit my grandmother one day. She, was, she had cancer. She was ill in hospital. My grandmother was quite a character, really. She came, my mother's side of the family came from Northern Ireland. So she was a, a come from Northern Ireland, a Protestant from Northern Ireland. And, um, and my grandmother was a real character. I, don't, I never knew whether she was a Christian or not, to be honest with you. I mean, she went to my dad's church for a couple of years and, and then she stopped going. And then when I started my church over in Feltham, she attended my church for a couple of years and then she stopped coming. And she was one of those, you know, she liked a pint of Guinness every night. She took the snuff, you know. Do you know anybody that takes snuff? It's not very common these days, but she took snuff, you know. And I'm telling you this, if the Mormons came round, she'd have the Mormons in and have a chat with them. And if the witnesses come round, she'd have the witnesses in and she'd have a chat with them. And even the spiritualists, she'd have them in and have a chat with them. And I never knew where she stood. Never knew where she stood. She was ill with cancer and I was, oh my goodness. I was just a young pastor. And I went in to see my nan. I said, nan, I just need to know. Are you right for eternity? Are you ready to meet the Lord? And she said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And it made me thrilled with the wonder of our salvation to belong to Jesus to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, to be ready for heaven, to live in the light of eternity. May God help us in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, can you say amen or something? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm even more glad I'm saved now I'm standing here than I was when I was down there. And when we were singing those songs, I was glad, I'm telling you. But I'm even more glad now. But we live our lives in the light of eternity because we serve another kingdom. Are you hearing me? We serve, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. We serve, you know, we march to a different drumbeat to the rest of the world. We march to a different drumbeat. We serve a different kingdom. Hallelujah. Paul said we are citizens of heaven. Hebrews says that, that our citizenship, that we are pilgrims and sojourners in this world. In other words, we serve a different kingdom. We serve the kingdom of Jesus. And we are living in the light of eternity because while we are here, we serve that kingdom, not this kingdom. You may work down here, you may live down here, you may own stuff down here, but we serve another kingdom. And it's the kingdom of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 And so we have a job to do, to minister for Christ. If we live in the light of eternity, we've got a job to do, haven't we? Yes. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What is your job? Mine? If we're living in the light of eternity, what's our job down here? I'll tell you what it is to preach the gospel. It's to talk to people about Jesus. It's to share the gospel about, of Jesus with those that are around us. We live in difficult days, difficult times. We need to be wise how we share the gospel. I drove my car one day to the traffic lights and there was a girl there preaching with an out hailer. And she said, get saved or go to hell. Get saved or go to hell. All the cars that were stopping at the traffic lights were this loud hailer. And I thought, I'm not sure that's the right way to do that. But every day we have a, a ministry to serve our community, to serve our world. What is the answer to the ills of our world? It's Jesus. Right. It's the gospel of Christ. 
we see our governments tinkering and our politicians tinkering and we see this, this group pressing for this and that group pressing for that and group pressing for the other. What's the answer? It's Jesus. To share the gospel of Christ. To take it to those. You have neighbours, you have friends. You know, I worked for about 20 years in the print industry before I became a pastor. And it's quite difficult to, to witness sometimes. But you'd try, you know, and I used to leave tracks. Do you remember those tracks, those things called tracks? You leave, I used to leave tracks around. You need Jesus, you know. One guy came up to me, he picked up the track. He said, actually, Jesus needs me more than I need him. I said, how come? He said, well, Jesus needs me to serve him. <laughs> I said, actually, you can't serve him until you get saved. So read it, you know. <laughs> But you do those kind of things, don't you? You witness around. And I, I must admit, for years, I wondered whether I was really being effective. And I asked my boss if I could put a Bible thought on the church, on the church, on the print notice board, you know. And I, every, every week I had a, a, a favorite verse up there for people. And I used to leave my Bible open, you know, with John 3.16 highlighted in yellow. And you know, well, you know, <laughs> It's so funny to watch it, isn't it? People can be so... And people are wandering about and, and, they, and they see the Bible, you know, and they have a look around. If nobody's looking, they come over and they have a look. And I'm over the other side, I'm thinking, yes. <laughs> we do what we can. We have opportunity. We serve another kingdom. We serve the kingdom of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you know something? I, I know at least six people from that company that either directly or indirectly found Jesus as, as their saviour through that witness and through that... And it took years before it happened. You just think it's never happened. You think you can witness to people and it's not doing any good. Well, don't give up. Don't give up because there'll be a breakthrough because we serve another kingdom. We're serving the kingdom of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Am I preaching the truth here today? Yes. You know, sometimes it's hard, I know, and sometimes we feel, you know, you, you know what it's like, you wait for an opportunity and an opportunity comes and you don't take it and, and, and then you think, oh, I missed it then and then, and you, you know what I mean? But don't give up, will you? Don't give up, you know? But all of us also, we have a specific ministry, don't we? We serve the church. Because in serving the church, we're serving another kingdom, aren't we? I mean, look at all the people who are serving the Lord here. Musicians, worship leaders, you know, tech guys, people on the doors, you know, people that come and sing, you know, pastors, pastors' wives, ministers, ministers all these ministries in serving the Lord. We all do it. To serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us. What does it say in Ephesians? That God created us in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. Um, for good works, for works of righteousness that he's called us to. We all have that ministry in serving the Lord. Do you know one of the greatest ministries in the church? And I don't mean this by fear or favour, but one of the greatest ministries in church like, is a Sunday school teacher. You, honestly, I believe that. I believe that. It really is. I, I, I do a Life Connect group, and they're all sort of quite elderly people. And I said to them, can you name me one or two of the most influential people in your life when you were growing up? And most of them said the Sunday school teacher had tremendous influence on their lives. It's that gift of God. God calls us to do these things. And beloved, you're members of this fellowship. Make sure you get involved. Make sure you get a ministry. Make sure you serve somehow. I can still remember David Nell. He was my Sunday school teacher. I can still take, remember him taking us through the book of Joshua and talking about all the battles and the victories that God gives his people. And I went home from Sunday school inspired. And if you could 
well, I don't use the Bible so much now because it's all on my iPad and it's all on my... But if you saw one of my old Bibles, the book of Joshua is marked all the way through the book of Joshua. Where did that come from? I'll tell you where it came from. My Sunday school teacher, because he taught it to me. And even now it's a blessing, the ministry that God has given us. Have you got a ministry? Are you serving that kingdom in ministry? Some people say to me, Pastor, I, I don't know if I have a ministry. Well, you do, because there's always something you can do. It doesn't matter what you do. Just do something to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You're serving another kingdom. You're serving the kingdom of Jesus. There's always something you can do, isn't there? I mean, just be ready to do anything. Somebody came to me one day and said, Pastor, I'd like to serve the Lord. Is there anything you can give me to do to serve the Lord? And I said, wow, yeah, they're really short of people serving coffee. Because we had two services, and between the two services, we had a coffee time. I said, we really need somebody to, to serve the tea and coffee. Oh, no, Pastor, I couldn't do that. My ministry is singing and teaching and pastoring on platform. I couldn't serve coffee. My ministry is on the platform. I thought, yeah, likely. <laughs> Do you know those feelings? Yeah, likely. <laughs> Anything we do for the Lord is serving his kingdom. Come on, isn't it great to serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Just do something. Say to the pastors, there's something I can do. There's always something to do for the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. Bless his holy name. What a wonderful salvation we have. Are you glad you're born again? Yes. Hallelujah. Live in the light of eternity. What a wonderful salvation. Working for another kingdom and watching for Jesus' return. Do you know he's coming back again? Do you know he's coming back? The angel said, this same Jesus shall so return in like manner as you have seen him go. We don't hear preaching on the second coming very much these days, but Jesus is coming back. The apostle Paul said, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, wow. What a wonderful hope we have. What a wonderful hope we have. And we, haven't we got a good God? Yes. Haven't we got a good God? I don't know if anyone here remembers Howard Carter. He was one of the founders of our movement. And, and um, he, he came to our church when I was a boy. And he preached on those verses from 1 Thessalonians 4. And as he, as he preached on those verses, he said, I want to tell you a story. And Howard Carter could tell a story. He really could tell a story. Some of you may not know him, but he was one of the founders of the AOG movement in this country. And he said, there's a story of a king who particularly loved pottery and clay vessels. So much so that he established a large company who were designed to make pottery and clay vessels and paint them ornately and braise them in the fire. And, and as they were finished and as they came to perfection, they were packed up and they were sent to the king. And he placed the vessel in a place of honor in his palace. And all around his palace, so much so that he had to add rooms and add extensions to his palaces. So all of these vessels, beautiful vessels, ornate vessels, beautiful designs were placed in his palace all over. But then one day the king got very impatient and he said, I can't wait any longer. And he went down to the company he said, I want to take every clay vessel that you've got right now. And the people said, but some of them aren't finished yet. He said, don't matter, I'm going to take them all right now. And he went down, he collected all the vessels, took them to his palace, to a place of honour. And you see, some of those clay vessels were packed up and sent off. But some of them 
were picked up and sent to the palace. And some of us will be packed up and sent off to heaven. <laughs> and some of us will be picked up yeah. when Jesus comes again. <laughs> but we'll all be in his presence, in the presence of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you glad you're saved? I just want you to go away this morning feeling glad you're saved. Hallelujah. We know Jesus is going to come again. We don't know when. People have tried to predict it, haven't they? You've read all those articles. Jesus is coming here. He's coming there. He's coming this time. <laughs> they don't know, do they? Jesus said even the Son of Man didn't know. <laughs> but he's coming again. Can I just leave you with this admonition? The Bible says whoever has this hope purifies himself, even as he is pure. And, and the word of God teaches us to purify ourselves, keep our lives clean. We have a wonderful salvation. We're serving another kingdom. We're waiting for Jesus' return. But let's keep our lives clean. Let's keep our lives pure. Let's keep our lives holy. One of my favorite Bible commentators is a man called William, Dr. William Barclay. And he speaks about the the effect the world has on us. And I was reading one of his comments, he says, you know, when you, when you put on a clean shirt, he said, you go out to work, he said, and it's perfectly clean, by the time you come home, the collar's all dirty from the grime and the stuff of the world, the cuffs get dirty from what, from the infection of the world that's around. And you have to wash it again, <laughs> don't you? And we live in a world where the language is bad, the values are bad, the morals are bad, sin abounds and it infects. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You guys that work and you hear people speaking bad language and stuff gets into your head and words get into your head and, uh, and all that kind of stuff goes on. But there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's bank and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains and if I'm talking to someone here this week and you've slipped up and you've messed up a bit along the way I want to tell you there's a place of cleansing and healing in the blood of Jesus in the precious precious blood of Jesus you can go out of church this morning cleansed again renewed again refreshed again in Jesus precious name whoever has this hope in himself John says we know that when he shall appear we'll be like him for we will see him as he is and whoever has this hope purifies himself James says keeps himself unspotted unstained by the world why because we live in the light of eternity yes. we have a wonderful salvation we are serving another kingdom and we're waiting for Jesus to come back again with great joy and blessing let's pray shall we father in Jesus name what a wonderful salvation we have what a glorious saviour. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin in Jesus' name. And I speak that cleansing over this congregation this morning. And if there's one that needs to come afresh for that cleansing, one that needs to come afresh for that healing in Jesus' name, I pray that as they reach out to you, there will be that cleansing and that healing and that deliverance in Jesus' precious name. Grant it, Lord, we pray that we will leave this place full of the joy of our salvation, full of the wonder of our salvation. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.